Amazon DynamoDB provides fast access to items in table by specifying primary key values. However, applications often require accessing data using alternate keys as well. In these cases, it's advantageous and beneficial to define a secondary set of keys, also referred to as secondary index, to enable data access. DynamoDB supports two types of secondary index, global secondary index and local secondary index. In this video, let's learn more about global secondary index in DynamoDB. Let's learn how to create and set up a global secondary index, how to query data using a global secondary index from the AWS console and also using a .NET application. I'll also show you some of the things to keep in mind when creating a global secondary index. Hello, welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Rahul and I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. Without much delay, let's get straight into learning more about global secondary index in DynamoDB. A secondary index is a data structure that contains a subset of attributes from a table along with an alternate key to support query operations. Now a table can have multiple secondary index, which gives your application access to many different query patterns. However, note that there is a cost and storage associated with creating and maintaining a secondary index. Every secondary index is associated with exactly one table from which it obtains its data. This table is often referred to as the base table. Now with the global secondary index, the partition key and the sort key can be different from that of the base table. The global secondary index is considered global because queries on the index can span all the data in the base table across multiple partitions of the base table. This depends based on the key that you select for the global secondary index. When you create a DynamoDB table, each key value must be unique. However, this is not the case when you create a global secondary index. The key values doesn't have to be unique. Let's navigate off to the AWS console to learn how to create a global secondary index on a DynamoDB table. Now you can create a global secondary index when you create a new table. So if you come into the tables under DynamoDB and say create table, you can specify your table name, the partition key and the sort key. And in here, you can also select and create a global secondary index. To do that, you'll have to choose the customized settings scroll down and specify the indexes under the secondary index. You can select the create global index and specify the partition key and the sort key for your global secondary index. You also specify the attribute projections, which defines which sets of attributes are projected onto the index. Now this by default is selected to all, which means all of the table's original attributes are projected into the index as well. Now the other options you have is only keys, which means only the index and the primary keys of the base table are projected into the new index. The third option is include, which explicitly specifies the attributes that you want to be projected. Based on your application and the querying patterns for this new index, you can choose the attribute projections that you require. Choose based on the attributes that you require on that particular query access pattern and the application that's showing it. If you choose all, it will have to project all the attributes, which will mean extra storage and also work to get these attributes across. A global secondary index can be created also on an existing table. However, note that a local index can only be created when you create the table. So let's navigate off to an existing table. Let's go back to tables. Let's select the weather forecast table, which I have been using in all my DynamoDB videos. This table stores the weather forecast data with a partition key of city name and the sort key of the date. So using this DynamoDB table, you can query based on the city name and get all the temperature data for different dates. We've seen different querying patterns and ways you can access this data in my querying video. You can check that out, which will be linked here, also in the descriptions below. Now to create the index, let's navigate to the index tab and let's create a new index. Now I already have a few index created because this does take some time to create and set up the index. Now to create one, let's click create index. Let's specify the partition key. So let's say in this case, I need to query based on the date. So given a date, I need to get the temperature for all the different cities. Now the base table is partitioned over the city name, which means I cannot get the different temperatures for all the cities for a given date. 
Now, my application also needs to show this, so I'm going to create a new global secondary index which has a partition key of date. And the sort key in this case can be CD name as well. So let's specify both of that and it automatically creates the index name which you can also specify and override. So you can specify in this case index new because I already have an index created. Now once that is specified you can specify the capacity calculator which I am currently leaving it as default. Now if you scroll down you can also specify the attribute projections which has the all only keys and include. Let's leave it as all. So in this case, let's come back and name this as new dash all so that we know that this has all the attributes projected and let's click create index. Now this is going to create the index and start backfilling the items from the base table into this new index because of which this does take some time. Now in this list view, you can see all the indexes that I have created before. So here I have the date city name index, which is a keys only projected attributes. We have the new one that we just created, which has all, and we also have the date city name with temp index, which means which includes the temperature C. Now that's the only additional property that I have projected. Now this is using the include option and selecting explicit property names. Now this is still in the creating phase. Once that is done, it will move into the active state at which you can start using this for queries. If you scroll to the right, you can also see the item counts in those indexes. Now this is still zero because it has still not backfilled the data from the base table. Now we can start using these existing indexes in the queries that we make to this table. So if we navigate over to explore table items for a scan or a query, you can choose the table or the index that you want to query on. So let's specify the date city name index, which is already created and let's specify run. Now this is going to run a scan across this index. Now in this case, since I had projected only the keys, you can see this gets only the city name and the date. Now, if I was to select a different index, let's say the temp index, this is also going to show us the temperature for that particular row. This is because I included that as part of the projected attributes to the index. If you click into this item, you can navigate into that item for that particular index. You can also use the query operation. So let's specify the all to see if that's already created and let's specify a date. So we can copy this date from here and specify that inside this and specify run. Now in this case, it is returning back all the data for that specific date. Now if I navigate into the item, I can see all the details of that particular item. Now that we've seen how to query this index from the AWS console, let's see how we can use this index from a .NET application. So let's switch over to Rider, where I have an existing solution open. This is a default ASP.NET Core Web API template, which has the weather forecast and the weather forecast controller. Now I have been using this exact solution for most of my DynamoDB videos. I started off this solution in the five different ways to query data from DynamoDB, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. This has different methods based on the querying patterns and different scenarios and shows how you can use DynamoDB to achieve that. So you can also use this to refer back and see different querying patterns and ways to access data. So let's navigate down and add a new method to show an example of querying using the global secondary index. So let me copy this existing method which uses the query request and uses the query async on the DynamoDB client. So let's copy this existing method and let's paste this in here and let's rename this method. So let's rename this route attribute and specify this to be gsi-query and let's also name this as get using GSI query, just to say global secondary index. Now all we need in this particular case is a date time. So let's pass in a date time as a parameter and remove the string name. So let's pass that. Let's make sure that is passed in and let's also specify the date time as a parameter name. So on the query request, let's modify these properties. So for the key condition expression, in this case, we are going to query based on the date. So let's remove the city name and just specify the date. In this case, instead of greater than, let's use the equals to get all the data for that specific date. Instead of from date time, let's simply specify date time. Let's remove the limit because we don't need to limit. Let's also remove the projection expression. 
Let's keep the expression attribute names. This is because we have the date passed in as a parameterized name. So we need to map that to the actual name of the property. This is required because date is a reserved keyword in DynamoDB. So let's keep it that way. Let's remove the city name from the attributes and let's pass this as date time. Now instead of from date time, let's specify the date time and specify the value and convert it into the ISO format. So once that is done, we need to specify the index name because right now this is querying on the table. So we can add an additional property as index name and specify the index that we need to use. So if we switch over to DynamoDB UI, let's navigate to the indexes and let's choose an index to query this. So in this case, let's first choose the date name index. So let's copy that name and specify that in the index name. So once the query request is specified, we can use the query async on the DynamoDB client to make the query request. Now, once we get back the result set, we need to map it into an item. Now, in this case, it is currently mapping to weather forecast list item, which is a custom DTO class that I had created in a previous video. But instead of this, let's create a new class. So let's create a new class here and specify this as weather forecast. Let's specify GSI item to just indicate that this is from the global secondary index. Now, based on your application scenario, you could name this something more meaningful. So let's specify that for now. We need two of these properties, which is the city name and the date time. So let's copy them over into this class. Now let's come back to the weather forecast controller and let's specify that instead of the list item. So weather forecast GSI item. So once we've got the items, we no longer require this because we are not paging this. So if you need to know how to paginate data, you can check out my pagination video where I show you how to do the pagination from a DynamoDB query. So let's remove this for now and let's simply return this items. So let's say return and return that into the API call. So since the API now needs to be weather forecast GSI item, let's update that as well. Now, since this is not a paged result anymore, we can simply return an array or a list inside this API return method. So let's specify a list for now. Now, since the date time is no longer nullable, we can remove the dot value check and directly convert it to a string. So let's put a breakpoint here and run this application. This launches the Swagger UI, which is by default configured for the ASP.NET API application. So if I scroll down, you can see the new method, GSI query, which requires a date time. So let's specify try it out and let's paste in a date. So let's use the same date that we copied before and let's click execute. Now this hits the breakpoint and it creates the query request first, passing in the table name, the index name to use, the key condition expression, which in this case is the date time equals the specified date time. And it also specifies the attribute names and the values for that particular key condition expression. So once we make the query, this is going to return the data for that specific date. So if I navigate back, you can see it returns the three records, which is Brisbane, London, and also Mumbai. In this particular case, we only get back the city name and the date because those are the only keys that's specified on this particular index. So if I navigate to the index, you can see that this is a keys only index, which only has the date and the city name. Now, even if I was to have an extra property inside here, so let's navigate to the weather forecast GSI item and let's specify a temperature field. So let's specify prop in and let's specify this as temperature C. Now, even if I have this extra property, this is not going to be populated when we make the query because the index is not going to return that particular data. So if I execute this query again, it hits the breakpoint. So let's continue the execution and you can see all the records has temperature C as zero because this is not currently populated. So to fix that, let's switch over to the new index. So which is the date city name with temperature index, which also has the temperature C property projected into it. So let's come back to our application, stop this and change this index name to be the new index. Let's run this application again. Let's close this and come back and execute the same query on the swagger, which hits the breakpoint. So let's remove this because we don't need this anymore and press F5. Now, in this case, you can see the temperature C is populated where those values exist. This is because the new index has this temperature projected onto it because of which you can query back this information. 
Now, if we navigate back to the DynamoDB table, the new index that we created is active, which means we can start using that as well. So let's stop this and let's specify that index, which has all the properties populated, which means we can also use the original weather forecast item as part of the return value. So instead of using the weather forecast GSI item, I can specify the full weather forecast item, which is the weather forecast.cs. So let's specify that. Also fix the return value so that it's cast correctly. And let's run this and see this in action. Now, if I come back and click execute, this is going to return the full weather forecast data. Now, since all of the information is projected into that, we can see all the information getting returned back. So you can see the summary as hot day, the weather type, etc. All these information is coming back because we have projected all the attributes from the base table onto the index as well. Now, depending on your query patterns, you might not need all the information in the API or the screen that you're displaying this on. Now, if you want to be showing a list view and then click into one of these items, you can use the GSI index to get the primary keys and then use the primary keys to get the full item when you click and navigate into that specific item. So to demo that using the API, let's stop this and revert it back to the old GSI item. So let's specify the GSI item in here and let's also use the old index. Now, if I was to run this again, let's use this to execute for the same date. Now, once you have the date and the city name, you can copy Brisbane the city name or the date that we've just used and let come to the get call, which is get using a specific date. Let's specify, try it out. Let's specify the date in here and the Brisbane city name and click execute. Now, in this case, it's going to hit the main table and get back the data. So you can see you can get the full data for that particular item when your application actually needs it. So you can save on the data being transferred back and forth your API and also from DynamoDB. When designing DynamoDB global secondary indexes, there are certain things that you need to keep in mind. Now by default, a DynamoDB table can have up to 20 GSI by the default quota. You can get this increased. However, try and keep the number of GSIs in check. Avoid excessive use of this because this also includes an increased storage cost and also the right performance degradation because all this information that you're writing in the base table has to be copied over into the indexes. Now you can plan the partition and sort keys based on the different querying patterns that your application requires. Choose the appropriate attribute projections like we saw. So if you don't need certain attributes in the GSI, make sure you exclude them from that and select the explicit attributes that you require to be present on the GSI. You can always drill into the actual item by using the primary keys on the base table. You can also consider the read write capacity and allocate it based on your querying needs and the applications that access this particular index. There are a few guidelines that I have listed in my blog post, which will be linked in the description below of this video. I hope this helps you to understand global secondary index in DynamoDB, how to create a global secondary index on an existing and a new table from the AWS console. You can also create a GSI using code, which we can see in another video. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested to see that. Now with the GSI, we saw how to make the queries from the console and also from a .NET application. We saw the different ways the attributes are returned based on the attribute projections that you have done on the index. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. This also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.